Diamond Bees Board presents... The American Sports Cavalcade. A panorama of speed, color, drama, and excitement. The American Sports Cavalcade. Their alcohol blowing multi engine tractors. The 7,200 pound big boys. And we'll be seeing them today along with their little brothers, the 6,200 pound two wheel drive trucks. From the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. Hello, I'm Paul Page, and welcome to Houston, Texas. Now, when I think of Texas, I think of two things. First of all, Texas oil. And secondly, is TNN's annual visit to the Astrodome for the TNT Super Nationals. Now, I've already shown you two of the tractor-pulling classes that we're going to be enjoying today, but there's also the monster trucks. And for an update on that excitement, let's go inside the Astrodome to my colleague, Steve Evans. As you well know, Paul, crushing cars has always been a very important part of monster truck competition. And as always, I've come down to the field of the Astrodome to make sure that one of these 42 cars didn't get in here by mistake. Maybe a classic like that little Mercedes last year. I'm happy to report this year, they all deserve to die. I mean, these are some ugly machines, all gas guzzlers from the 70s and 80s. Nobody is going to miss them. What's kind of funny, though, and a little prophetic, is some of the sayings and bumper stickers applied long before they knew their ultimate fate. Now, that should have been on the roof. Now, here's one I particularly like on a particularly ugly Robin's Egg Blue Continental. Owner replied, if you touch him, my car, I break a your face. From the looks of it, he had a lot of takers on that one. And here's a beauty that at least at one time was a winner back in the election year of 1988. Now, to tell us a bit more about the machines that would be doing the crushing just outside the Astrodome, here's our pal, Pat Patterson. Well, Steve, never in my racing career have I ever seen anything like the monster trucks that'll compete in the Astrodome. This is your basic Ford variety here. It's about 1,000 horsepower. It's uh, alcohol injected and about 13,000 pounds. Uh, it takes about a five-foot tractor tire to keep it moving up and down the uh, racetrack. This is your basic Chevrolet version here of a Chevy S10, perhaps uh, only about a third of the width of the body of the normal ones that move up and down the streets and byways of these United States. And another Chevrolet variety here, Nightlife 2, uh, a little more standard body style and uh, certainly the same uh, horsepower and basically the same weight as all the other trucks. Now, something very interesting about all of these crews is they all work very closely with each other. Families travel together. They race with each other all year long. But you can bet one thing, when the green light comes on in the Astrodome, these guys are out to get themselves a big win at one of the biggest events, the TNT Super Nationals in the Astrodome. It'll be no holes barred, take no prisoners. These guys are out to win. It's great to be with you and Paul Page, and we're looking forward to it uh, right here on TNN. Well, thanks, Pat. We'll be seeing the monster trucks a little later on, and we, too, can't wait. Right now, here's the heavy metal ball page, 7,200-pound modified tractors, and they pack more than one motor, more than two motors, sometimes as many as four motors. We got a glimpse there of Fred Freeman. The machine is the mean mistreater, and it looked like at the last second they made an adjustment to the front. Yeah, they're going to pull some weights around and make some changes here. Now he's ready to go. I love these machines. Look at that. Motors plugged in on all sides of the thing. Well, we're talking about power. Just take a look there. Oh, boy. Maybe they don't have a lot of forward speed, but the power it takes to pull a sled that can weigh up to 60,000 pounds is just incredible. I wonder sometimes with all the motors if they even know if one of them isn't running. Well, I'll tell you what, they are loud enough, and they develop an incredible amount of horsepower. And before you start laughing too much at the uh, engines plugged in at the side and two in line in the front, think of what type of uh, mechanical engineering work it takes to get all of those things to meet at a common shaft together. Absolutely. This is Fred Freeman, Wadsville, Indiana. There you see the hook process. That's what they call it, the hook to the sled. Here's the emergency device that would kill all the engines should the tractor somehow get loose from the sled. Now, the full pull distance, the ideal pull is 300 feet here in the Astrodome. All right, this is Fred Freeman. First pull of this session. 
started bouncing on the front end. That's never a good sign, but let's see if he can hang on to it as he keeps the power going and she finally grinds to a stop. And one of those engines wasn't running very well. We can see the blow by out the bottom of the mean this breeder. The distance comes in 254.83 feet. It's that precise because it's measured with a laser beam. So that's the benchmark with the first run. That's what everybody else will shoot at. Now take a look at the front end here. He wanted to come off the line and come a little bit to the right. Every time the front wheels hit the ground, he tries to steer it a little bit, but it got bouncing just a little too much. That meant that weight didn't transfer nearly as well as he would have liked. And so I think he's going to be a little bit disappointed with this run. The 7,200-pound modified tractor class. Fred Freeman, the mean mistreater, the first run in this category. Now he's down at the far end with Pat Patterson. Pat? Fred, what kind of pass was it for you? Well, I really don't think it was a very good pass. I was first hook. I had the option to drop it. For no more money, and it's worth it. wasn't worth another run on my engine. We'll see if it stands up. Yeah, I don't think it'll be any good, but it'll be good enough for the top five. The first puller is called the test puller, and he has the option of dropping back three in line and pulling again if he elects to do that. Apparently, Fred Freeman uh, elects not to do that, and he's going to stick with his 254 feet and change. Well, I think Fred realizes that they've really done a nice job of grooming this track here in the Houston Astrodome. This is the Texas Flash. That's Donald Nelson up in the seat. And again, we're talking motors, motors, and more motors. Look at that. Two behind one another, and then one up and behind that. I'll tell you, these machines are a machinist dream, or nightmare, depending on how you look at it, because almost all of the drive boxes and gear boxes are handmade. Yeah, it's real pretty until you have to climb in there with a wrench and fix it. Now, you saw Donald Nelson hold his hands up. They have to do that by the rules anytime somebody's working at the back of the machine, so everyone's assured that he doesn't reach down at the last second and adjust something. As soon as the tractor is hooked, and everybody steps out of the way, and we're ready to go. Well, Donald is from that well-known Texas metropolis of Cat Springs. Oh, yeah, I've, I've had dinner there up in their high-rise. Really a nice thing. Yeah, That's the revolving story. restaurant. Yeah, I've been there. He's got the hammer. Oh, the front end may have come up a little early. He, too, may have missed up balance here. Plus, he's drifting off to the left. Mm, I think he's going to wish he had a little more weight on the front end. Surprisingly enough, Fred Freeman's run holds up because Donald Nelson comes in a distant second right now at 241.2 feet. So Freeman, with his run, the first run of the day, is still in first place. And there you see the butterflies and the fuel injection of our next competitor ready to fire. We'll be right back for that pull. Stay with us in the Houston Astrodome. Welcome back to the TNT Super National from the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. I'm Paul Page with Steve Evans, and take a look at them. Engines plugged in all over the place here. You're looking at the fancy farmer, and the man driving, the fancy farmer himself, is Robert Elliott. And Robert Elliott has a brand new tractor. The one he formerly competed in was destroyed in Chipman coming back from Europe after some exhibition. So this is a, the maiden voyage, as it were, of the brand new fancy farmer, and it may be a little nose heavy. And we saw the opposite of this in the last run where the nose was too light. I think he's got way too much weight on the front end of this one because he comes up at 199 feet, and I'll bet you that right now, Fred Freeman is scratching his head saying, what am I doing still in first place after three runs? Freeman has the top pull, followed by Donald Nelson. This one slides into third. And here's our next puller, Brian Armistead in the Dollar Devil. Armistead is from Lancaster, England, where this sport is growing, in fact, in France and in England. Yeah, it's growing in popularity around the world, Steve. Well, Robert Elliott has now pulled off the helmet and is with Pat. Robert, I know that's a brand new tractor. You only had just a little bit of time with it. You actually had one of your tractors destroyed being shipped back from Europe, and so you really weren't testing this one out tonight. Yeah, it's been uh, quite difficult. This tractor's been giving us a little problem, but we're not going to give up on it. We've had a lot of problems getting the balance. It, we changed the engines up from the other one, the configuration, and we've had a little bit of engine problem. We got a lot of corrosion in there in that salt water. Thank you. All right. 
Those must be the engines out of the damaged tractor that must have been brought across the pond on the deck of the ship to get saltwater corrosion. Well, finally, the Englishman, Brian Arnestead, has got all of those engines fired up. That takes a while when you got this many. And he is ready to pull. He looks back to make sure everybody's clear. He's shooting at a distance of 254 feet. You know, Paul, it doesn't sound real good. The dollar double sounds like about 85 cents. That many engines, it ought to just be cackling with power. We're not hearing it still. They're going to clear him for the run. But I'm sure that he is worried about the noises that he is hearing blow back over him from those motors. But he doesn't pussy foot around, boy. He goes hammered down on all four motors. So oh, the front end starts to come up. And that could be because it is down on power. Is it driving hard enough to push him down? But it's not all that bad. 213.89 feet will put him in the third position. Again, any time that you are running down a straight line and drift off like he did, well, that cost you drastically. We take a look here. He got the front end up early and then got it back down on the ground a couple times, and that got it to bouncing a little bit. When you bounce, you start losing control. Yep, you sure do, and these tractors are a lot harder to drive than people might think, even though they go in a straight line at only about 30 or 40 miles an hour. It takes tremendous finesse. Let's go to Pat Patterson. He's with our guest from England. Well, Brian, you're our only Englishman in the show tonight. How was it in the Astrodome? Oh, great. Never seen anything like it. Tell me about the track and tell me about that pull for you. Yeah, well, it was only the second pull I've ever had with it. But it, uh, we're getting a little bit better, just getting used to it. What about tractor pulling in England? I mean, can this go over as big in England as it is here in the States? No, it's nowhere near as big yet. But we're trying to get there. We're glad to have you. Thank you. Nice accent. Good to hear that kind of an accent, though a little strange when you're talking a sport like tractor pull. Back at the head of the line now.